And my buddy years ago, I want to say 2012, 2013, uh, he lives in the suburbs of Philly and he would call me and say, hey, how close is uh, New Brunswick to you? And I'd say, not really. He says, oh, because I'm going to be blowing through New, New Brunswick. And I said, why? He says, I got to go pick up a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> Seems like a fun drive for you to pick up a bottle of whiskey. He says, oh, no, no, you, you, know, you know about this uh, Pappy Van Winkle? The Fred Minnick Show is brought to you by 291 Colorado Whiskey and by Michter's American Whiskeys. And joining the Fred Minnick Show, Mike Garofalo. What's going on, man? Hey, Fred. How are you, buddy? It's good to see you. I know you're coming off of uh, covering the Super Bowl, about to go on yeah. vacation. What What's the moment like for you when, uh, when the football season's over? Um, it's a mix of... Um, you know, accomplishment, right? Because we all kind of got there and we all worked hard starting in training camp and we put a lot of time in and a lot of folks involved in getting us on the air. Um, and it's good. This year was great because it was in L.A. Uh, mm-hmm. where our network is based. So it was great to see some folks, uh, a lot of them for the first time since the pandemic started. So that was awesome. Um, so it was it was a great week. Uh, and then you kind of look up and you say, all right, here comes the combine. Uh, here comes free agency here comes yeah. the draft so it's it's the spring in a lot of ways can be busier for us than the actual season can be um but it's it's all great stuff it's fun stuff and uh it's it's a lot of eyeballs a lot of folks it's amazing to me the dedication that you know people tune in for the first day of free agency where's my guy mm-hmm. gonna sign all this stuff so yep um it, it that stuff excites me as well so it, the springtime is kind of when you all get most competitive like Who's going to break the new signing, you know, um, the, the jockeying between Ian Rappaport and Adam Schefter and, yeah. and you know, everyone else is, you know, just that part to me is, is fascinating because that's got to be very competitive to, to get the scoop. It is. And we're, we're sometimes uh, competitive amongst ourselves. I mean, uh, we have a lot of folks at our network that, that break news, but uh, Tom Pelissero, Ian Rappaport and I kind of duke it out to be the guys and, and sometimes you're, you're mad when even your own colleague beats you to a story <laughs> um so it's it's but it's good i mean you know everybody wants to win it, it helps us be competitive as a group and it, it's fun sometimes to jab one another fred you sure know? well only one person has the honor of getting a um uh, the collapse of a stadium on almost onto an nfl player uh that fedex filled moment <laughs> what yeah. in the world was that like, you know, you're just following, yeah. you know, Jalen Hurts with the with an iPhone, it looked like. And then brrr, what, what was that like? A lot of things aligned for us right there. Um, <laughs> and thankfully, nobody was seriously hurt. I mean, right. I know that there were indications that lawsuits were going to be filed, which, OK, I mean, I understand it. Um, but everybody that fell immediately got up and started hugging Jalen, which is why I said, OK, everybody's, you know, relatively OK here. Um but we don't, we rarely get the quarterback for our post game interview because usually the network covering the game wants the quarterback and it has to happen simultaneously. So we'll usually get the next best guy. Well, it just so happened that uh, Rodney McLeod, the Eagle safety, had, had picked off a pass to seal the game, and Fox said, "We want McLeod," and they said, "Do you want Hurts?" And we said, "Yes, we'll take the quarterback of the winning team. Thank you very much." And so usually he runs off the field after after victories in Philly, and every time I miss the. The, the shot. Well, I, we were there and he started walking slowly. I said, oh, great. I'm finally going to get the Jalen walking off shot. And it just so happened to be the time where down comes the railing, down come a bunch of Eagles fans, security having no idea how to sort this thing uh. all, all out. And uh, to be honest with you, I, I was because the cameras in front of me, the video cameras in front of me converged NFL films and a couple other cameras. And so I just went up high and I knew something had happened, but I wasn't quite sure because I couldn't see over all the equipment oh, and the guys in front of me. Okay. So I was rolling and I said, something's going on up there. And I, and eventually once I was able to kind of get my head in between, I said, Oh my, these people fell out of the stands. This is incredible. So, uh, we threw that up on Twitter and Instagram and everywhere else as fast as we possibly could. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy that you got that and didn't even know you were getting it. Uh, cause yeah. it was, it looked, it was a perfectly composed shot and 
I mean, at least at least it wasn't raw sewage coming down on them, you know, which is <laughs> has been happening at that stadium. So, um, all right. So hopefully, no breaking news happens right now. Like you don't, you know, I'm not taking you away from a moment where no. you're going to get the text from a GM that Tom <laughs> Brady's coming back or something like that. So. Uh, hopefully, you know, this tasting hour is not going to take you away from too much. But. Yeah, but you know what? That's that's the beauty of whiskey and uh, enjoying it and, and allowing for we can't always be especially and we, we say it, we tell each other, uh, Ian and Tom and I, y- you need moments to yourself. And yeah, true. even those moments, sometimes you want to read a, an article or something. And so you go to your phone and. The phone is where the news comes in. You really can't. So, you know what? Sometimes you just, it's just me and my bourbon and, and hopefully somebody else. So, it's nice yeah, to be yeah. able to share this moment with you. Awesome. Well, so we're going to begin. What we're going to do here, we're going to do an actual blind tasting. And uh, you're not going to know what you're tasting. Um, and I'll reveal what they are at at the end. But you're going to you're gonna pick your favorite. Okay. And, um, and so, this is kind of like what I do as a taster. You know, I'll taste, I'll taste flights and I'll rank them and then I'll pick my favorite. So in essence, you're going to get to, you're going to be a, a taster for, for the next hour. And, uh, what I, what I'd like to do is I would like to start with kind of like a little tutorial on, on how I taste. And I know you're, you're a grizzled bourbon drinker. You've been at it for a bit. So we can, uh, you, you definitely no doubt have your, your methods. I'll just kind of break into mine. If you want to grab that bottle of Michter's, the, the Michter's, oh, you should I, have I, a, I, Yeah, I have, that's downstairs. <laughs> yes! <laughs> can you grab the bottle of Michter's from the second shelf, please? <laughs> yes, please. Oh, boy. The, the, I have uh, I have to you, you, you got Sorry. you got the tasters. I got now, the tasters. I thought that's yeah. where we were going. So, yeah, yeah, I think I should probably start including directions in the box <laughs> because this is this is like the third time this has happened to me. <laughs> but um, uh, you know, so while we while we wait on that, yeah. now you you are in your in your Twitter bio, you say that you are related to to Jimmy Garofalo. No, well, no, that's a that's a joke. We're, okay, we're, so you're not yeah. really a distant cousin. Yeah, distant, as in, I'm sure in Italy at some point, our family tree is connected. Um, I met his family, and see, he pr- he pronounces it Gar- uh, Garoppolo. Mm-hmm. Uh, I should pronounce it Garofalo. Uh, however, we got Americanized at some point, and it became Garofolo, and that's kind of what we go by. And so people say all the time, you say your name wrong, and I say, I know. Right. Or they'll say Garofalo and say, oh, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. And I say, no, actually, you said it correctly. That's the European pronunciation. So um, I, when I met his family, I said, listen, uh, we had to you had to have had an F in your name and it was changed to P's at some point because the traditional Italian spelling would be with an F. Um, and they said, no, as far back as we can remember, we've been P's. I says, well, I'm sure at some point our family trees crossed. <laughs> So this whole time we've been, you, you're so polite. You didn't correct me or uh, I've never heard you correct anybody actually with your name. <laughs> no. And well, thank you for being so polite for me, not bringing the uh, bottle that you sent me and ready to rock. So here we go. We're good. <laughs> All right. So go ahead and pour yourself um, an ounce or two, you know, and we're going to, we're going to do a little training with it. Okay. So the, the the beautiful thing about tasting bourbon is it's a little bit it's it's a little bit like art and the beginning of it can is like looking at a looking at a a piece of art hanging on a wall and it's that color cuz so when bourbon goes into the barrel it is as clear as the water from your tap so every single day it's in that wood it's moving in and out of that wood and uh picking up uh, all the all the wood sugars uh and it's changing the color and so the the darker it is, the older it is, and you know the higher the proof. So looking at the the bourbon, the, the color can be a really good indication of its time in the barrel. Mm-hmm. So right here, you know, we we're starting out with something that really is a spectacular bourbon. You know, Mictor's ten year old, um, you know, was on my top one hundred last year. It was a lot of people's you know uh, favorite bourbon of twenty twenty one. And it's it's fantastic whiskey, uh, and this color is is a really beautiful amber, 
you know, color. Mm-hmm. And I, I like to just kind of swirl around and, and, and look at it. it when, you, when you look at it and you appreciate it, you know, you're more likely to, to enjoy it than just like drink it like you're at a frat party. So that's, that's one of my favorite things about it. So then bring it to our nose. And when we bring whiskey to our nose, you open your mouth. By opening your mouth, you're relaxing your olfactory. And you can go side by side. One nostril will always work differently than the other. Uh, so it's basically like uh, on my right nostril, I pick up a lot more of the sweetness. On the left nostril, I will pick up a lot more of the spices. When you, mm-hmm. you work, when they do them in unison, you can smell them both at the same time. But when you isolate, isolate the nostrils, you'll get a very different experience than when you use both of them at the same time. And the first thing you're looking for in like any kind of spirits tasting is you're looking for flaws. And, you know, when I'm having to taste moonshine, this can really save my life because a lot of that stuff is not always, you know, made with the major flaws. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) There could be some turpentine in there, you know. Uh, So you're looking for things that uh, that smell wacky, like gym socks, uh, turpentine, Mm -hmm. uh, nail polish, things like that, that you definitely don't want to put in your body. I've seen seen Band-Aids in Whiskey Advocate referenced, which... And it's in a positive review, which is kind of weird to me, but I don't Yeah, uh, that's usually for like a scotch, Isla, uh, Isla scotch, which is using, uh, you know, it's heavily peated, uh, will have, will yield notes of Band-Aids. And, you know, I, I think if you were to, you know, really laser that in, everyone knows what the smell of Band-Aid is, uh, but it's a very particular type of adhesive. Um, and like, you know, if they were to put adhesive, it wouldn't, you know, register the same type of, of, of memory there. And I, you know, I used to work at Whiskey Advocate, really good reviewers mm-hmm. there. So, you know, when you see a tasting note from somewhere, you know, a professional like that, they're definitely smelling it. And usually other people will too, mm-hmm. but genetic, genetically, there's a, there's a unique genetic coding, uh, for some people that they will smell band-aids every time they smell peat. It's, uh, it, it's very interesting. Okay, so after you kind of waved away that there's not any like uh, anything in here that's going to kill you, mm-hmm. uh, you really do want to focus on what does it smell like. Um, and, and this is training your nose is is really is really just taking in all your life experiences. Like we tend to gravitate toward our childhood for special smells that really. Uh, blossom in our lives like for me pecans come very naturally because i grew up around Mm -hmm. a pecan tree Uh, cornbread comes very naturally Uh, any kind of sweets because i've been you know i'm I'm a kind of a sweet tooth Uh, and so all things that you you like to smell there's always a good chance that if it's in that glass whiskey you'll be able to smell it because you have muscle memory uh, for that particular for that particular scent now training it your eyes are as important as as your nose is like if you were to put a blindfold on mm-hmm. and somebody uh, put a banana under your nose and you didn't know it was a banana, you didn't see the banana, there's a good chance that you would not smell it. Uh, a lot of people can't smell a banana. A lot of people can't smell things like corn when they can't see it. So so the nose is is really all about what you're familiar with and what you can see. So here we know it's bourbon. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, what does, what are some of the notes here? So we go, go back in there and, you know, uh, Michter's always traces a very fine line of caramel and nutmeg for me. No question of caramel. Yeah. There's no doubt. And then the, the fun part is putting it on your palate. And so, and this is, this is the part of, um, of tasting, you know, that I have really, put a lot of focus on Mm -hmm. and that's paying attention to what part of the tongue is it hitting you know because the tongue picks up very different flavors on every uh, part of the tongue so on the tip of the tongue you will get sweet notes you will get savory in the middle you will get um, spiciness in the back and you will also get bitterness in the back uh, as well as like uh, uh, toward the middle back you also you might also get some tingling on the sides of your palate it'll be like bitterness you know, so pay very close attention on the first taste, what part of the tongue is it hitting? So as you put it on your tongue for a taste, uh, just uh, call out when you feel the sensation on the, what part of the tongue. Got it. Go. Yeah, 
Definitely more to the sides to start off. Yeah, that sweetness comes a little later for me, but it's there. There's no question about it. Mm-hmm. So it and starts, not, not starts a lot of bitterness the side to the yeah. palate and then goes to the tip of the tongue? Yeah, for me. Okay. And now no when question. you go back in, so the sides of the palate are, are like the bitterness regions. Like for spirits, like you can really pick up bitterness mm-hmm. there. Uh, mm-hmm. A bitterness in um, in the way of spirits, like in terms of like what what can be bitter, you know, things that are bitter are can be like tobacco. Uh, it can be uh, pecan shells, walnut shells, any anything that has like an oiliness to it that kind of creates like a bitter compound. There are there are types of lettuces that are very 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 bitter, and you know, and so like when you go back into taste, focus on the sides and see if you can define what type of bitterness that is, and then when you go to like look at the uh, at the sweetness. Try to mm-hmm. do a simple thing as to breaking down, is it a fruit sweetness or is it a sugar sweetness? So like a, a confectionery sugar, like a, like a caramel versus like a blueberry. So as you go back into taste, uh, try to nail down, now that you know where it is on your tongue, what mm-hmm. it is. Got it. Okay. Definitely a nuttiness. There's no question about that. Yeah, that's okay. that kind of nutty. Yeah, almost, almost, nutshell. That's a good way of putting it, right? Like mm-hmm. not the not necessarily an oily taste to it, but more of a nutty shell kind of taste to it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the the bit, the sides of the palate came through came really through for you, uh, mm-hmm. and now it's the finish. Like after you've swallowed. What are you still picking up? How long is it? How long is it on the on the palate? That is, yeah, that is one of my favorite parts of a whiskey. Is how long does it finish? How long? I mean, you know, if you, if you've got some really high proof stuff that you're drinking, I mean, it can go on for a while, right? Mm-hmm. And at what point are you saying, all right, the the finish is is over, right? Can it last for up to a minute, if not more? Yeah, I mean, yeah, um, I, I would say. You know, across the board, things like George T. Stagg, um, you know, something like a uh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, you know, things that are real meaty uh, mm-hmm. or something that's incredibly complex at a lower proof, like a Henry McKenna 10-year-old. You know, those are bourbons that will last on your on your tongue for well over a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the longest finish I've ever had, you know, was was not in was not in the bourbon category but i mean it was i would say well into you know well over an hour uh, but you know that was also uh <laughs> sipping straight out of a demijohn in in cognac france and it was from the 1800s so it was like <laughs> it was like uh kind of a spiritual out of body moment so incredible that's yeah. amazing i mean the best the best things you'll ever taste you know you can close your eyes and you can think about them it's almost it's almost meditative, uh, really. Yeah. Uh, but you know, when when you get a couple of glasses in, the meditation kind of goes out the door. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different kind of meditation. <laughs> it's it's a it's a special kind of meditation. It's very yeah, right. different. All right, so you got it. You know, now that you're going to go into the flight here, you got any mm-hmm. questions? You are you are you are here by a sanctioned taster uh, awesome. for uh, for the show. A certificate coming in the mail, I'm sure. Right? Yeah, you, you just passed your uh, your taster combine, <laughs> and uh, and it's time to go. Rock and roll. All right, so let's go ahead. Now, when you are when you are being critical of a of a spirit, you are you right away. You are, and if you have the glassware, let's go ahead and fill up all gla- all three glasses. All right. A, B, and C. You are automatically judging uh, as soon as you smell it, as soon as you look at it. You're you're judging A over you know A versus B, C, and vice versa. You know, and you want to you want to pick what is your favorite, and and it's it's not the easiest thing to do, believe it or not, because you can like all three of them. Mm-hmm. But you got to choose, you know, which one do you like more? No idea how you do that at the end of the year with all the contenders, by the way. Lots, uh, 
lots of lots of tasting and just doing it you know it was last year was incredibly hard i, I was originally going so I'm, I'm fascinated with like the college football top 25 yep. and i was originally going to do 25 well as i made my list uh i realized that you know basically 15 uh there was i had like 30 different products that I was like, could be number 25. I was like, I can't do 25. I got to do 100. And it ended up being quite the undertaking. And, uh, but I think I'm going to keep on doing it. So, awesome. but that was the first year I did it. First year I did it. Uh, okay. Well, remember your, remember your training there and uh, let's do it. Wax on, wax off. We're starting with A, right? That's right. Start with A. Definitely a. Um... You want me to say it first? No. Oh, yeah. This is your. Yeah. This is your. Okay. Uh, your taste is, in here, but this is like graham crackery to me. Right. That's a very nice. Very nice note. When I do the graham cracker, I always look for the marshmallow and the chocolate behind it. By the oh, way, I'm not yes, getting that course. here, but I usually like. <laughs> so you're you're going you're going back to the campfire as a kid. Hey, a, li a little smoke added to that wouldn't wouldn't suck either. Yeah, sure. Yeah, love it. Oh, wow. That's very unique. Hang He's on. going back in. He's going back in. Well, that kind of hit everything all at once, right? Like when yeah. you when you talk about what area of the tongue, at least with the mictors, it was it was kind of on the sides. That, that thing kind of just sailed across the tongue here. So glaces sailing away all over the palate. Oh, that's good stuff. Yeah. So glass, glass A definitely is, you know, what I would consider like a buttery mouth coating, mouth, you know, mouth coating uh, bourbon. And those are the kinds that kind of get on your tongue and kind of drip in underneath. And like you can got, you can be, you can be really overwhelmed by, by how spacious it is that you don't really focus so much on the, on the, what flavors are popping. Mm -hmm. And that's not there's nothing wrong with it. I actually just I will take I will take a whiskey, put it on my tongue and not even think about what it will taste like, but just kind of feel it and it and it can be and those can be some of my favorite favorite uh bourbons. And so I would encourage you since you found that in glass A, I'd encourage you to see if, you know, B or C uh mm -hmm. have any 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 kind of mouth coating or mouth movement like that one does and if mm -hmm. they don't then as a critic you can like eliminate it based on that unless you know it just populates your tongue in one spot and it feels so right you know you're like yeah i kind of like that you know so that's you, you the process would eliminate it. You would eliminate it because you want that feel is what you're saying you want that feel of everything kind of playing i like i like mouth yeah. coating yeah. Right, right. And so, and so as a, as someone who's assessing all three glasses, you can, you can make the determination of like, well, A is such a more outstanding mouthfeel. I'm putting A ahead of B or C right. or, or whatever, you know? So that's, that's one way, one way to make an early elimination. As you go to glass B, who knows, maybe glass B kicks it square in the teeth. Do you know what these are, by the way? I do not. Oh, okay. This one smells well. Let me do both nostrils. Remember your training, Michael. <laughs> this one smells more woody to me. Yeah, there's some uh, there's some funk going on in here. You know, uh, funk? there's some funk. 
like funk is not oh. always a bad thing. You know, Jamaican oh, okay. rums right. have real funkiness to it, but yeah, it's almost. It, this is dusty. This is like dusty bookshelf yeah. type stuff here. But underneath, underneath all that, uh huh, you can get a get like a pastry pastry coming out of the oven or something. Okay, little little something going on there. Yeah, I think my right nostrils. It's not clogged, but it's not playing nice today. Because it's definitely coming in on the left side. All right. I will reserve comment for you. Fred, what's happening here? That thing is, um, that's like chewing tobacco. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Getting some that's, that's getting some Levi Garrett going in the dugout and spitting it all <laughs> over the place. <laughs> wow. It but it but it, it the, the the nose and the palate are not disconnected, you know? That's no. when I get that's when I get thrown for a loop is when I smell this and then I get, you know, nothing yeah. but sweetness. And that would have been Yeah, this is a uh this is a, a a funky like you got to be in the mood for it. Uh, I can imagine some of my friends who partake in cannabis would love to pair a joint with this. There you go. You know, this has got some real uh, real deep herbal notes here, but you know it when we are kind of making that uh, assessment of three glasses, I would say don't give up on it. Let's come back to let's come back okay. to B. And, um, but I'm, I'm pretty certain where you're going to go with it, but I, I, I don't think, I don't think B is something that's going to win something like this, but it, it could be one where you're in the right mood for it. It could. Yeah. You know. It doesn't, it doesn't turn me off. I mean, it's, no. it's definitely something that, you know, on, on, on the right night it works. Oh boy. And I don't and know. The, maybe it's, go ahead. I'm sorry. The go nose ahead. of glass C. Oh, yes. All right. See, but now listen, we got a potential unconscious bias at play here, Fred. All right. Because this one's going to be in the Crystal Glencairn. Oh, so very afraid, nice. I'm afraid that it's already been classed up in my mind and there's nothing I can do about it. So. <laughs> you know, I, I have broken so many of those. I, <laughs> I feel so bad about it. But those things always break on me. I don't know why. I'm not meant to not have nice things, I think. <laughs> right out of the gate this is just really it, it kind of a and c it, it's kind of got similar similar action hold on i gotta reset here no 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 that's not a little different yeah, yeah way different this, this is more this is more uh now, having compared these two, A is more uh, sweets, like like um, um, Entenmann's, Hostess. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. this is more fine dessert in a nice restaurant type deal here. This is, um, this this is, is white, white tablecloth, table. you're saying. And, 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 ah, and, yes! And, uh, and, and A is a vending machine. <laughs> All right, we going in? I'm Let's going do in. it. That did not disappoint. Oh, my goodness. So that hit up front right away. And then a slow cascade toward the back of the tongue right here. That's yeah, it was, it, was. Uh, it was a wave. Oh, it, you you called that perfectly. <clears throat> I mean, this is um, this is a really good uh, exhibition tasting. I might be recruiting you to uh, to be a judge on a few things. Goodness, this is great. <laughs> you got a, you got a new you know when this NFL if this NFL thing NFL thing yeah. goes sideways, you you might have a career in tasting. Uh, listen, we've got Sean McVay, Super Bowl champion now, uh, entertaining the idea of leaving after one ring at the age of thirty six to go into broadcasting because he loves that so much. 
It's not that crazy. I mean, I'm older than McVay. See, you you know you're really starting to get up there when the guys winning the Super Bowl are younger than you. It's it's one thing to hire a young coach, but when they start to come up and <laughs> actually win them, and you're like, I, re- I remember being 36. I didn't even have kids at 36. It's incredible. I, well, I, I, same. Same. And, and like, yeah. you know, and Tom Brady retiring, it's kind of like I always always look at, you know, Tom Brady's like, well, he's older than me. You know, now I don't, I don't, there's no one out there older than me playing football. So, <laughs> exactly. you know, I exactly. feel old, but, um, um, you know, I, I love, um, I, I watch uh, good morning, uh, uh, football every morning because, uh, one of the things I love about that show is it's fun. And I feel like, I feel like sports commentary has gotten away from the fun. You know, it's like everyone wants to yell at everybody all the time and, Oh, it's 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 frustrating being a sports fan. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. There's there's a need for hard news and, and all yeah. that. I don't think there's a need for Skip Bayless style kind of commentary. And and that's and what you all you all bring like what Mike and Mike was early on too is yeah. just kind of like fun back and forth commentary. And the dude doing angry runs just takes that you know, to a whole nother level of like WWE kind of <laughs> crazy. Yeah. yeah. Kyle's, Kyle's, his ability to every day, because now you're going to get into February, March. Now, granted, like I said, there is news throughout the off season, but you get into some of those shows in May because the show doesn't go dark. You get yeah. into some of those shows in May where, all right, we got to have a conversation about, you know, this team's prospects going forward. And it was doubly hard during COVID because, uh, we didn't have off-season workouts in full. Um, we didn't have a lot of news, period, because people were in the house. And we were doing the show from the house as well. Now, granted, when I say we, you know, they're in there daily. Uh, I, I pop in every now and then as a, a, a fill-in for them. But we have our regular Good Morning Football weekend during the season uh, with our uh, Good Morning Football weekend crew. But, um, you know, it, it's it's for Kyle to do what Kyle does day in and day out because – He's not. He's, he's his football knowledge and takes are, are are phenomenal. I'm not to say that, but he he knows what he does and what rings the bell for him. So for him to be able to do that uh, throughout the year, and when you sit down at the table, you better be ready because you know Kyle's going to bring it. So yeah, um, it's yeah, it's a great it's a great crew, and I was uh, I love that see that Chris Carter uh, made yeah. has has made a return. Um, uh, I thought it was um, that guy was ahead of his time on a lot of his uh, his commentary uh, when he was at ESPN, but Chris Carter is great. I'm a big fan yeah. of his. And I know I could never hear, never have him on the show because he's very, uh, very vocal about being sober. And yeah. anyone, I never, never, ever want to uh, jeopardize anyone's sobriety, but I've always been a big fan of uh, Chris Carter. Well, here's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to have you come on our show. How about that? We'll make that I, happen. Yeah, I can do that. I, I, I can give you uh, – I can throw in a uh, a little football knowledge from time to time. Um, there it is. But That's uh, how we can get – that's how we bring worlds together, uh, yeah. Fred. That's how it's going to happen. Uh, so, what do you – what's your first assessment here? We got to call one of them. Yep. We got to we got to we got to put one to last and I I think I know where you're going to go. But go ahead and smell, retaste, do whatever you need to do here to go ahead and, and put in your uh to put one to the side okay. and then make it between uh two others. Yeah, that's that's the uh That's those uh and and not a specific uh flavor of pie, but those are those tasty cake. You have the tasty cake pies? Tasty oh, yeah. cakes of Oh, you do have them. Okay, all right. Yeah. That's a. I grew up in Philly. Tasty cake was a Philly thing. This is like tasty cake pies to me, right here. A. Wow, it's two guests in a row I've had from Philly. Who was the previous one? Amos Amos Lee, the singer songwriter. Ah, got it. Okay. That that a, man a, that, that, dro- that man drops more f bombs than uh, than I do, and that was <laughs> impressive. <laughs> A is a nice, safe play, you know? So A, yeah. A by nature is not going to be eliminated, right? So we, we know B is probably going down, but let's let's give it a nice farewell. Yeah, B, um, if I would give it a, a positive, it smells a little bit like hazelnut coffee. Okay. And the tobacco. 
I, I don't. I don't hate that. I, I mean, I, I feel bad. I'm going to say goodbye to you because I don't hate you. Glass B is definitely a um, definitely has some strength. Yeah. And by the way, when I say I don't hate you, I like you. I don't mean to say, hey, I don't hate this. I mean, I, I prefer to speak in positives, and I, I do. I like that. Yeah, I mean, but, but B, is, it's going up to what I think is we're going to, when they're revealed, I think we're probably going to be looking at a couple of Apex uh, bourbons here, you know. So it's uh, it's down for A and C for both of us. Mercy. Yeah. All right, let's put B to the side. We'll see you later, though. So we are going on vacation later today after a long football season. Um, it's kind of a – my wife has been watching the kids as she comes down the steps holding my daughter Vivian. Aw. Uh, I've got glass walls on my office, um, which, is, cool. which is good. We live in a townhouse, so uh, mm-hmm. we had to we, – we bought it. It was open, and we had to, we had to wall it off. And we went with glass because we didn't want it to feel like completely closed off and feel more open. So we went with glass. But what the challenge is when my wife is working, she's in here. My daughter's on the glass, banging on the, let me in, let me in. Um, <laughs> meanwhile, when I'm working, they just kind of walk by and like, hey, hey, good to see you, guy. Uh, oh, right. We're going on vacation. So um, we uh, it's, it's a nice little carrot toward the end of the season for me and for my wife. Um, so, uh, I told her you're driving cause we're flying out of Philly tomorrow. So you're driving mm-hmm. to Philly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe wherever you're, going, you're going, yeah. wherever you're going, you'll run into, uh, Sean McVay and you know, he'll recruit you to the Rams. There you go. There you go. What a crazy story that is. Which part? Well, McVay and, um, um, Stafford running into each other in Cabo. You know? Oh yes, I got you. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's one of those stories that it kind of sounds made up, but if it sounds made up, it probably is true. So, <laughs> yeah, they were both in Cabo at the time, and I think that helped facilitate things to get things uh, to to the finish line. And, and listen, I, I give them all the credit. One of the things we talked about on the air this past week was, um, will the Rams' policy of Lighting, not lighting first round picks on fire, but but not treating them as if they're crystal glasses. And you know, can we can we actually uh, get something of value out of them that we know we've got right now versus the first round pick that you don't know what's got a bird in the hand, we're through in the bush type deal. And I've always said that I think general managers overvalue these picks, and they always think, well, they're my picks, and I know how to draft better than anybody, so. They're going to be valuable for me versus, you know, somebody else having them. Uh, I, I, I give them all the credit in the world for going for it. I really do. I think more, more people, more teams should do that. And who knows? Maybe this, this will influence them. Mm. Where are you? C? Yeah, I mean, I'm really loving the smell of C. C is like they talk about all the time. I wish you could have like a uh, like a cologne or a soap that smells like bourbon. And I'm like, I don't know if I want that because if I you ever run into a cop smelling like bourbon, that's not a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, and and they do have soaps out there that smell like bourbon. Or at least they try to make them smell like bourbon. Yeah. But B or sorry, C is a that is what bourbon smells like uh, when you kind of. If you were to take all of the all of the aromas that people describe bourbon in the most positive sense, I feel like C is a glass that they're describing in terms of aroma. Yeah. See, this is why I, I really got into whiskey. I mean, I, I did the beer thing for a while. Um, I tr- tried my best to get into wine. I'm just not a wine guy. I don't think I'm going to be a guy. Um, And my buddy years ago, I want to say 2012, 2013, uh, he lives in the suburbs of Philly and he would call me and say, Hey, how close is uh, New Brunswick to you? And I'd say, not really. He says, Oh, because I'm going to be blowing through New New Brunswick. And I said, why? He says, I got to go pick up a bottle of whiskey. (laughs) Seems like a 
drive for you to pick up a bottle of whiskey. He says, oh, no, no, you, you, know, you know about this uh, Pappy Van Winkle? And uh, okay, yeah, yeah, so he's going through the whole thing. Um, and so he got into it early and, and he collected, I think it was 2012, he got all the, the entire Van Winkle line that he still has not opened to this day. Uh, and calls it the greatest accomplishment of his life. Um, God, you know how much those if 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 he has a I 2012 him, pappies, I mean, yeah, whew, that could be a little yeah. retirement nest egg. Yeah, and uh, but he would, you know, I'd say, well, let me I'll start to get into it, and I, I I go to the corner here. I wasn't living in this street, but there's a liquor store in the corner, and Phil gives me a. a, a I mentioned it to him. I said, hey, my buddy's chasing this Van Winkle stuff. He says, no, 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 no. I got this. This is much better. And he sells me a bottle of Stag. And he sells it to me for $75. And I said, well, this he says, this stuff gets better reviews than some of the Van Winkle. I, okay, fine. I, this is probably 2014, I want to say. Mm-hmm. And so I drink it. And I, I Fred, I, I had to choke it down. Because if you're not used to it and somebody gives you 130 proof whiskey. Right. I mean, I choke it down and I finally finish the bottle <laughs> and my buddy says to me, Hey, I got you another stag. And I said, Oh my God, I don't know what he charged <laughs> he, probably 150, 200, whatever it was. And I said, well, I couldn't say no. So I take it and I drink it and I choke it down. Do you know what I would give for both of those bottles right now? Like, yeah, I'm, I mean, I've been trained for, <laughs> for their, you know? Yeah. It, it's, it, it's amazing. You started, you know, you started out with one of the most complex, you know, bourbons <laughs> of the 21st century. And, yeah. you know, really you needed to start with Maker's Mark or, you know, Standard right. Buffalo Trace or something. Exactly. Exactly. And now you go back and you, yeah, now, now I look for uh, stuff that's 120 or higher. I mean, not, not yeah. the, you know, there's some stuff that's 100 proof that's fantastic. Um, but I go back and if I drink something that's 85, 90, whatever, it's like, tastes like water to me you know so it's just it's it's been quite the journey and then i i hooked up d'angelo hall who's on our weekend show uh hooked me up with my guy prav seraf uh who owns a liquor store uh in dc where they have with gray laws i think they're called gray laws where you can buy yeah. and resell whiskey so he's got a, a a high uh highfalutin clientele that that he sells a lot of stuff to yeah he um, and I, yeah yeah he's got I, he's sure, got the uh, list yeah, I've struck up a relationship with him, and he invited me to his house, and his basement is just off the charts. I mean, just some. And his friends came over, and they were so gracious. This was during training camp when I was covering the now Commanders, but then the Washington Football Team. Uh, and and Prav, I can always go to him for. I wish he lived closer, but I I, I, I always go to him for thoughts and notes. And um, if I'm in yeah, a liquor store, uh, okay. I mean, in my circles, he's like a uh, he's like a celebrity in the. Uh, in the whiskey circles because he, he does get such good, uh, releases. Now his prices, you know, look, if you're, if you're getting those bottles, your prices are going to be high, but he can get, yeah. he's a guy that can get anything, anytime. And, and like, he's got, uh, he's got his finger on the pulse on, on whiskey. Yeah. So like he is, he is definitely well known and liked, um, in the, in the whiskey circle. So if that's your, if that's your inside guy, I mean, <laughs> Uh, you gotta yeah. have sources. That's You're the a guy. Reporter. You gotta have he's, sources, you know? he's definitely the guy, and, and um, he's bottling his own stuff. I keep the. I got the bottle on the uh, here. Uh, Dream Spirits. Now he's bottling his own stuff. Yeah, uh, he sourced this from from Barton. Um, this is the bourbon. Yes, this is, it's empty because it was good, Fred. Um, <laughs> so he got the, the and MGP was his rye. Uh, I think this was a eight year Barton. I forget, but yeah, pro, and he's such a such a. Like I say uh, uh, about the whiskey and, and and sharing it and connecting yeah. and, and that's a big part of the reason the taste and the smell is one thing but but you know the communal nature of whiskey to have a friend like that that you connected with over whiskey is is just it's what it's all about. That's exactly right. Like if you can't if you can't sip with someone now look I, we've all had a drink or two by ourselves uh, but like it's so much better if you're if you're with friends and yeah and. Uh, uh, and just kind of talking about the good life. So, uh, all right, you got a decision to make here, Mike. This is a, I do. a a versus C. This is this is coming down to it. What uh, what's your winner? So it's twelve fifty in the afternoon uh, on a Tuesday after the Super Bowl, and I feel like if I was going to open a bottle and I knew about it, 
something I'm experienced with. I'm experienced with both of these bottles. I would reach for A right now, right? Nice okay. little afternoon drink. Yep. Be perfect for this. Mm -hmm. But we're going on vacation. And my brother's a big whiskey guy. Shout out, Steve. Um, I would bring C with me and say, hey, it's been a long year. It's been a long season. I haven't seen you in a while. We haven't had a drink together in a while. Let's pop open C. So I would say C is my winner. But A, don't go far. So let's All right. So C was uh, – C is the champion. I'm probably right there with you. It's probably a um, – Definitely a uh, a close close one, and now I got I got the uh, the blind tasting key right here. You can so see excited. Allison Allison gets this all set up for me, and so we're gonna read the results. This is like naming the Super Bowl MVP right now. This is what this is, you know. Oh wow! So there it is. So Glass B, our last place winner, was mm -hmm. uh, Rabbit Hole Race King. So Rabbit Hole is a small distillery in Kentucky, and um, the Race King is their is their limited edition uh, product. And and look, that, I mean, I thought I thought it was good. It definitely was tobacco forward, and um, but. Uh, I thought you know, in, in the right mood, Glass B is 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 good stuff. And again, oh, yeah. I don't say this lightly, and I don't I don't mean this. And when you bring up cannabis, people get offended for some reason. But uh, this is, uh, you know, I, I'm friends with a lot of people who pair weed with whiskey, and I think you know, I had yeah. B real on the show, and the entire show is about pairing weed with whiskey, and I think B would go really nicely with some cannabis. Uh, coming in second, what? This was in my top 10 for 2021 for, uh, best, uh, American whiskey. Um, Remus, Re Remus, uh, Repeal Reserve, wow. fifth series. So I think this, I can't remember where that finished. I think it was finished at number six. So my, in, definitely in my top 10. Uh, Remus Reserve Glass A. And your winner, following suit to your cravings of high proof, big muscular bourbons, the Elijah Craig Private Barrel Selection, full proof, called Hook and Hoof. So wow. someone, you know, people send me their private barrels, and that was uh, that was an Elijah Craig Private Barrel called Hook and Hoof. So you, my friend, uh, you chose as your palate has always pushed you in a higher proof scenario, except in your early days. What's the uh, what's the proof on the Remus? Uh, Remus is one hundred proof. Got it. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, it's really proof. good. Yeah. Really, really good. But C is wh whoever picked C. Congratulations. That's fantastic. It's good. It's definitely good. And let's see if I can find the proof on that. It is. Hundred and thirty two proof. So. I'm actually shocked it's that high. I mean, with 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 how balanced it is and mm -hmm. how how smooth. I hate smooth. I didn't say smooth. That's a strike that from the record. Can you edit that out, please? <laughs> Um, yeah, with, with, with how balanced it is and, and how, um, the sweetness and the spice work together. I just, I'm sure I, I figured in the 120 range that I'm, I can't believe it's that high, which is great. That's the ultimate compliment, right? You don't want yeah. it to taste like the new can. So yeah. Right. That's, that's true. No, I mean, uh, C definitely delivers a, uh, or what we now know to be Elijah Craig, uh, a barrel proof private barrel selection. Um, it was complex. It was meaty. It was velvety, and it was all th all the things that you want to see in a, in a bourbon. And the big thing is is that it did not taste 132 proof. Um, no, it tasted. In fact, I would dare say it it, it had a lot less alcohol uh, notes in it than the other two. So, and they were fine. Well, what I love, and, and I know you were high on the barrel seagrass this year. Um, mm -hmm. 
when, when stuff can give you, when stuff can throw a bunch of stuff at you, right? And it all works together. And 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 sometimes you know it's kind of like jazz, right? All the notes separately don't seem to make sense, but 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 put them together in the right person's hands, and and it's just the best thing for your ears, or in this case, your. Part. That's right, absolutely. And and you, my friend, you uh, you stepped up to the plate today and. Be, you know, tasted like a pro. You tasted like a pro. Did you learn anything about yourself as a taster? Did you, did it feel about right? Did it go like you th- would think it would go or, you know, I mean, what do you think? It's, it's, I, you know, I, I think it's a, I love the way that you broke it down to the different areas of your tongue and then kind of go within that. Because if you just, you know, the, the untrained palate, if you're just going to take a, a, a glass and, and throw it down your gullet and say, oh, what do I taste? What do I, you know, it's, it's not going to work that way. It's, it's, it's a great way of having a method. Right. And, and I, I mean, I'm, I don't mean to keep making the, the, the football comparisons, but the way that these guys work on their craft and the wide receivers and their footwork and the defensive linemen in their hands, right. You can't just go in there. I'm going to go past that guy. No. How do I get past that guy? And what's the technique that I use? It's, it's, it's kind of like that. So it's absolutely. How pros do it, Fred. Well, Mike, it's a pleasure having you on the show, and uh, I hope you enjoy your your vacation. Um, any any early uh, any early predictions uh, for football this year? Like any just it's, anything? It's funny you mention that because they they love to hit the here are the odds for next year's Super Bowl. Yeah, and it's just so hard because the Broncos are are thrusted up there, right? They they're in the top five or six or something like that because of the anticipation that they could potentially get Aaron Rodgers, right? right. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, as I sit here right now, my expectation is that Rodgers is going to be back with Green Bay, um, and, and and they're going to continue. They'll, they'll find a way to keep Devontae Adams as well, if that's mm-hmm. the case, certainly to keep him happy. That's part of the plan. That's part of what he wants to hear right now to make that decision to go back. So I think they continue to be a strong roster. Um, he's just got to show up in the postseason. There's no question about it. We're now to the point where we can start the question – Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, why do you fold in the postseason? So uh, I'm looking for them to continue to be strong this upcoming season. Um, Deshaun Watson, we'll see where he lands. My shot in the dark early prediction, watch out for him to land in New Orleans. That could be a potential landing spot to him. Watch out for them, yeah. Yeah, all of a sudden, New Orleans is back in the conversation, right, if that happens. So it's going to be a wild ride. We'll try to sort it all out for you uh, and look forward to talking about it every day on the NFL Network, Fred. My God. Well, thanks for tuning in, and uh, I look forward to uh, sipping whis- whiskey with you again, hopefully next time in person. That'd be great. Let me know those dates when you come to New York. We'll line you up for Good Morning Football. Love it, man. Cheers. Thanks, Fred. Thanks, Fred.